science is known for its use of numbers. What do you think? Is that good or bad? If the numbers scare you away, then that's bad. But you know deep down inside that numbers allow us to measure what is or isn't happening. They provide for an objective measure to aid us in our subjective decisions. Numbers can bring us from a world of wishful thinking to one of real results. If you want a handle on modern living, you're wise to also get a handle on numbers. Okay, that's my numbers speech. Let's begin. You know carbon monoxide is a dangerous and odorless gaseous poison. Should you be scared when someone tells you that there are about 1 billion metric tons of carbon monoxide in Earth's atmosphere? Is it okay to breathe? Well, how many tons is the atmosphere? It's about 5 million billion tons total. So let's find the percent carbon monoxide in the air we breathe. Yeah, it's 1 billion tons of CO divided by 5 million billion billion tons of atmosphere times 100 equals 0.00002%. That would be 0 0.2 ppm, parts per million. So take a deep breath. Are you inhaling carbon monoxide? Yes, actually you are. Is it significant? No, it's not. There are far, far more other molecules, such as nitrogen and oxygen. In fact, for every five million air molecules, there's just one carbon monoxide molecule. One out of five million, or if you will, 0.2 out of every million, 0.2 ppm, on average. Though the toxicity of carbon monoxide is high, our exposure to it in fresh air is actually quite low. We use numbers quite a bit in science. They help us to understand. They provide perspective. In science, we deal with numbers of all sizes, big and small. To help us deal with big and small numbers, we have a system called scientific notation. First, let me show you how this works for big numbers. Mm. Five million billion tons of atmosphere. That's a big number. You could write it out like this. Five zero 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 zero. It's five quadrillion. Mm -hmm. Would you believe me if I told you that this was the same as five times one quadrillion? And this number right here is the same as 10 to the 15th. What I'm doing is I see the first digit is 15 places to the left of the decimal point. Here, just count the zeros and you'll see there are 15 of them. And there you have it. This is a form we call scientific notation. 5 times 10 to the 15th. It consists of a coefficient multiplied by 10 to some exponent. The greater the exponent, the greater the number. There are 7 billion of us here on Earth. 7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Hmm. Transform that. 7 times 10 to the 9th. You got it. Piece of cake. In chemistry, we deal with atoms and molecules, right? Well, atoms and molecules are so small that in any macroscopic sample, there are a huge, huge number of them. The number of water molecules in 18 milliliters, for example, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That is an astronomically large number. Why so many molecules of water in only 18 milliliters? Because water molecules are so submicroscopically small. So small, guess how much a single water molecule weighs? Not much. Here's the mass of a single water molecule in decimal notation. 0 0.000000299 grams. That's pretty unwieldy, isn't it? But I got a question for you. Is this number greater or less than zero? Think about that. Can we agree that this number is small, but that it's also greater than zero? Great.
Let's show this number using scientific notation. Carefully count the places to the right of the decimal till you get to your first non-zero digit. So what we end up with is 2.99 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. The minus in the exponent indicates we're counting places in the opposite direction. Question. Is this greater or less than zero? Now, don't be fooled by the negative sign in the exponent. All that negative sign means is you're going in the opposite direction as you count the places. Let's do an easier one. Say that liter of water you're drinking contains 0.0171 grams of calcium. Convert that. Mm, count one, two places over. 1.71 times 10 to the minus 2. Hey, good. Is that a negative or a positive number? It's positive. In science, we're typically talking about real things having real mass and occupying real volume, which means positive numbers. I'm not even going to tell you that if you want to make this a negative, you'd put a negative sign right here in front of the coefficient. No, no, no. Let's stick with the positive. In science, numbers are a positive thing. Now, let's not start doing calculus, but let's not be number shy either. Numbers give us an important objective measure that has value. Oh, but before we finish, please remember, because we deal with real things, every number must also have a unit telling you what that real thing is. What if I told you I was three? Three what? Three feet from the goal line? Three years old? Three pounds overweight? Three meters tall? Huh? Numbers are important but so are the units. Keep everything together. Use both the number and the corresponding unit. Remember that. For every number, there's got to be a unit. Wait, did you get that? What's a number got to have? Very good. A unit. Good chemistry to you.